you guys imagining like Audrey Hepburn on a fainting couch by any chance? Because that's what I was going for. <laughs> This next song uh, is a song from Connections, but the this, this song did not start out as a song for Connections. The song started out as uh, a personal song that I wrote for my friend Melissa to give to her husband Guy as a Christmas gift last year. And um, uh, this personal song thing, I told you earlier that, that sharing my music via house concerts was an unexpected turn in my career as a musician. This personal song thing is another unexpected turn that my career took a few years ago, but one that I'm so glad it did. Um, over the last maybe three or four years, um, we've gotten to do maybe 35 or 40 of these now. Occasionally somebody will hire me to write a song for them, and it's oftentimes as a gift for a loved one, for like a birthday or an anniversary or a holiday. Uh, we've been part of three successful marriage proposals. <laughs> tempted to guarantee our work, but I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> um, and then uh, sometimes I get to write a story, or uh, suits me a song uh, for somebody just to commemorate some part of their own personal story. And I love every single one of these projects that I get to do. I get to know the person I'm writing for in a, a deep way and to be able to put part of their story into song. It's just a privilege and a pleasure every time I get to do this. And in this particular case, I got to do this for my friend, Melissa. And Melissa also happens to be the gorgeous cello player that makes an appearance on two songs on Connections. She plays on this song for Guy, and she plays on one other song on the album. So if you go home with that album tonight, you will get to hear her just beautiful work. Um, and so Melissa told me her story, and we did the song, and I really felt like the song fit our theme for Connections, and that's why we decided to put it on the album. But she shared with me how when she first met Guy, and maybe you have somebody like this in your life too. I think you're lucky if you do. But when she first met Guy, something just clicked. And she felt that the instant she met him, she could be utterly, genuinely Melissa around him. Just all the pretenses just fell right away. And from the get-go, she felt comfortable in her own skin, in his presence. And that's what drew her to him at first. And then she talked about how you know life goes on. They've been married now for a few years. They've got two young kids and life gets hard. <laughs> and it does for them too. She shared with me though how she sees those bumps in the road that they've encountered as a couple as opportunities to find their way back to and then work on maintaining that connection that they found in each other when they first met. And so that's their story. And this is their song. It's called It's You.
been mine Maybe in a book of fiction You'd have been mine. So late last summer, we did a, a summer house concert tour last year as well. Last year we did 60 shows all over the country. We were very tired by the end of that summer. But toward the end of last summer's tour, I was starting to get the ideas for the songs that I wanted to write for the album that would become Connections. And then I heard a TED talk on the radio that changed everything. <laughs> and I heard this talk by a woman by the name of Brene Brown. Is anybody here familiar with Brene Brown? You are, yay. I feel like I know you better now. <laughs> so for those of you who are not familiar with Brene Brown, she is a PhD. She has her PhD in social work. And she does her research at a university in Houston on the topic of vulnerability. And the thing that hooked me when I first heard her speaking um, on the radio, she shared that, um, that she's learned from her research that vulnerability is the birthplace of creativity. And I thought, ooh, that's good. I like that. And I wanted to know more. And so I Googled her and I looked up every YouTube video I could find of her speaking. And I ordered all of her books online and I just devoured all that I could learn from Brene Brown. And I learned some really life-changing stuff from her work. And it turns out that from her research, she has learned that not only is vulnerability the birthplace of creativity, but it's also the birthplace of many of the things that we want and need in our lives, like love and belonging and connection. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> she was just ringing all of my bells. And... I, like I said, I learned so much stuff from her, but there was one thing that when I first heard her share it, it just struck me square between the eyes. And she was talking about one of the most difficult emotions for us to feel. And if you think about a difficult emotion, you might f fill in the blank and say, it's something like grief or loss or loneliness hurt, disappointment, anger, you know, a like difficult emotion, right? But she says, and I so totally got it when I heard her say it, that one of the most difficult emotions for us to feel is joy. And I know what she means because I am one of those people that when something awesome has just happened in my life or things are just generally going great, there's this little voice that will show up in my head and say, ah, well, the universe probably didn't really mean that. And the other shoe is about to drop. And so you had better steal yourself emotionally against this potential future disappointment before it's all taken away from you, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> she also shared in that same talk that the antidote to that syndrome that I have is gratitude. And then wouldn't you know, I had an opportunity to put that into practice not long after I learned this idea. And it happened last November when Jamie and I were on a short college tour, college tour, and we had to get to a school um, in a remote part of the state of Wyoming. And so it meant that one of the days that we were driving, we spent most of the day driving off of Blue Shield Highways and on this two-lane blacktop highway out in the middle of, of Wyoming. And if you've driven through Wyoming, you know what I mean when I say the landscape is just breathtakingly gorgeous. The kind of day where we're pointing left and right out the window. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, you gotta see that. And so here we are, you know, on this road where we wouldn't see another car for like half an hour at a time. You know, it was just me and the love of my life in this car, driving on this open road all by ourselves, these beautiful surroundings. And we're on our way to a place where people are going to pay me money to play my music for them because by some miracle, that's what I get to do for my life's work. And I just start feeling all these feelings, right? And as we're driving, daytime falls into nighttime and when that happened, the sky 
opened up with a blanket of stars like we never see in Los Angeles. It took my breath away. It was so good. We could see the Milky Way. It was beautiful. And as we're on this road with the stars and all the feelings, uh, Jamie has this habit when he's driving. He will oftentimes take his right hand off of the steering wheel and place it on my knee. He'll rest it there. I love that so much <laughs> he does that. And he did this on, on this stretch of road that night. And as I'm recalling it now, I can still feel it as I felt it that night start in my fingertips and in my toes. And before I knew it, my entire body was just flooded with happiness. Like that kind of over the top brimming with joy, like it was a physical sensation, you know? And then the very next moment, this little voice shows up in my head that says, well, you know, you're probably gonna end up crashing into that ditch in about 30 seconds. <laughs> And then you're going to be stuck out in the cold, and you're going to catch pneumonia, and you're going to lose your voice forever, and never be able to sing again. And I was like really creative with my manufactured worries on this road in Wyoming that night until I stopped myself. I'm like, what are you doing? Knock it off. Like, do I have control over whether we end up in a ditch? No. Does my worrying about that change that fact? No. I realized that the only thing my worry was doing was robbing me of an opportunity to enjoy that beautiful, perfect moment in my life. And so I closed my eyes and I put my hand on top of Jamie's on my knee. And then I just allowed gratitude to wash over those worries. And that's what this next song is about. It's called Yellow Line.
eyes, you and I are driving in Surface fall 